Good evening, everybody. Welcome to War on Truth. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Wait for a few people, see a few people jump on. We're jumping into our uh, War on Truth tonight. And trying to get up and running here. A little late, a little behind. Uh, I know there's a little, <coughs> excuse me, a little delay over on this side, but uh, good to see a few jumping on. Amen. It's good to see everybody out tonight on a Thursday night, September. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Welcome to War on Truth. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, but anyhow, it's good to see everybody. Uh, our pastor is a little bit under the weather. Uh, not completely under the weather. Most people know he is still having a, a bout with uh, a kidney stone. And uh, so, but needless to say, he's there, um, those things are rough, they say. So I have to thank the Lord that they're, uh, I've never had any and hope I never have any. Amen. Um, so, but anyway, uh, Trying to make sure I get everything up and running like it should be. Uh, and everything. Hopefully going good. Amen. Hopefully the sound's good. Hope the volume's good. Hopefully I know the picture's probably not real good, but uh, there we go. Hopefully I'm moving around a little bit. Uh, there's a little delay from this screen to that screen. But anyhow... Uh, hey, we're going to jump into this a little bit. Probably won't be as lengthy as normal. I have picked out a few little things to look at, or one in particular I wanted to look at tonight. But hey, just real quick, don't forget, those that are watching, don't forget, especially if you come to Mount Vale, don't forget that you uh, Sunday morning service. Amen. We had a move of the Lord, the Spirit moved last night. It was a great uh, uh outpouring of the anointing i believe the lord touched and helped some people um but you know so let's remember sunday we have an eight fifteen service amen early in the morning the bible said jesus said the lord said seek me early and you can find me amen <laughs> but uh we're uh we have an eight fifteen. we have a nine thirty small groups we have ten thirty morning worship in the main sanctuary Six o'clock evening worship in the main sanctuary. So remember that. Don't forget, September the 25th, we're kicking off our Sunday night lives. Amen. So uh, we we had those before COVID hit, and we kind of have got uh, kicking them back off again uh, because we serve a God that's alive. Amen. And uh, But we always have good services in that time, and the Lord, people are coming expecting. Amen. So come expecting God to do something during that time. And uh, let's remember that. Amen. I was trying to think if there's anything else happening. I know the women are having an outing tonight. and The women are having an outing sometime, again, going to Cades Cove. Uh, so remember that, ladies. You can go on our church center app and look those up and try to find them. Uh, we're, we're looking at it and we're going to jump into it. I'm trying to make sure I have covered everything and haven't missed anything. And... Uh, If you're out there, somebody make a little comment. I'm not sure I got it right. Uh, just make a little comment out there and uh, just say, hi, I'm here, or, hey, I'm there, or wherever. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, into this little topic, and then we'll uh, seem like there's something I'm forgetting to announce. Uh, still be praying for our pastor if you're just joining online. Uh, looks like uh, Sister Lily's out there, Sister Mary's out there, Brother Don, good to see you out there. Um, so um, let's uh, continue to remember all those that are sick. We have a few that are sick. Let's continue to remember Mark Gillum tonight. Uh, hey, let's see if it comes up. I got it on my phone, but I don't see it on this setting. No, let's see. No. Oh, there you are. Mary's watching. Oh, okay, now I got you. Good deal. Thank you all for posting that. I was uh, trying to make sure I had it right on my um, 
on this screen over here. We got two or three screens going on at the same time. And uh, normally we have somebody manning one of these, but uh, it's just me tonight. So y'all are stuck with me. <coughs> so don't get off the air yet. We're going to try to cover a few things and we'll we'll get into into the meat of this. But hey, let's remember all those that are, that are sick and those that are under the weather. Um, continue to remember Sister Shannon Scarborough. She, she needs a touch from the Lord. And uh, just to name off a few, so uh, let's remember them tonight when we pray at the end of our end of, end of our uh, session, if you will. But you know, we I was thinking about this little thing that we do here. Pastor started the war on truth, and it's because we're we live in a society today that has so much uh, mis misinformation from the media itself. You used to you could trust the media, but now you can't hardly trust them as far as you could throw this church house because it seems like they all have an alternative motive, if you will, or an agenda. And even with social media, they fact check when they ain't really got fact checkers. And I mean, they've come out and told it that these fact checkers are not really fact checkers. They're just people with opinions and they were treated that way because they deterred or they allowed misinformation to flow from what they want it to flow from. But today I want us just to jump into this real quick and we're gonna look at, at, at a few things in here. And if you got some comments or got some questions, probably won't have a video. I do wanna play a video, hopefully the audio, you can hear it and pick it up. I got a little late into doing this and didn't get uh, with uh, the right people to get the videos put into play. And I really uh, didn't have them ready. I just put it that way. That's a little bit on me. I had some things going on this evening and some truck issues and everything else, but, uh, I want to look, the first headline is, is the CBP, which is the Customs and Border Protection Officers or the agency in at Calalexo and Andro parts of the entry, ports of entry in San Diego stopped seven different drug trafficking attempts. It said seven, they arrested seven gang members, intercepted 825 pounds of fentanyl meth at the border. This open border policy that the Biden administration has allowed to happen in this country is detrimental to this nation. I think everybody has, excuse me, everybody has a right to come into this country and be vetted first and foremost and to go about it the right way. They're illegal aliens. They don't like to use that word no more because that makes them criminals, which that's what they are. They've come into this country illegally, but they want to say that they're uh, undocumented citizens. You notice the change of the title and the change of the names. And that, you, you really, man, we ought to teach, we ought to do a segment on that one night because <clears throat> you'll watch, they'll change the definition or they'll change the the uh, wording of what people are in a way. Uh, uh, you know, you don't, you, you don't really like to hear, they don't really say a lot that they're pro-abortion, they're pro-choice. So it, 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 it makes it easier to, to swallow, if you will, and even with undocumented immigrants, that's what they want to call them, but they're illegal into this country, and they've opened the borders, and I forget the numbers of, of people that are coming across the borders. It, it's staggering in itself of how many come in daily, and, and just that they catch. It's not those that, 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 that get through, amen? But this little passage here, or this little article here is from Fox News, but it says this, and I'm gonna let a guy talk here in a minute, but it says that separately, uh, okay, let's see, separately, the Rio Grande Valley Sector Border Patrol captured seven gang members, two sex offenders in the Rio Grande Valley Sector and apprehended a migrant previously convicted of assaulting a minor coming back across the border. Uh, border officials in Arizona seized 102,000 fentanyl pills, 14 pounds of fentanyl powder hidden in an ice chest. We, fentanyl is one of the most deadliest drugs at this moment, and it's wreaking havoc in our country. Fentanyl is, is, is being laced, in, or it's being used to lace pills and lace other things and having a, a, a higher epidemic than we've ever had of o, people ODing. I talked to somebody out of state the other day and somebody in their family OD'd and it was the fact that they had been taking something that was laced with fentanyl and not to mean they weren't not abusing the drugs themselves, but the fact of the matter is with this fentanyl and not only that, with this young man's going to talk here in a minute, it's a very addictive drug, almost like once or twice, if you use it once or twice, man, you're hooked. And we see it coming across our borders, and it's so sad that our government is standing there allowing this mess to happen. 
It said the massive haul of narcotics, mostly methamphetamine and fentanyl, weighed a combined 825 pounds. I'm, I'm thinking, good gravy. And, and it's, and it's you know, here's another one. The border officers find 47,000 rainbow fentanyl pills in a hidden car compartment. They're seizing left and right down there. And that's not what, that's some of it's getting through. Some of it's moving into our country. Fentanyl is a powerful opiate, up to 50 times stronger than heroin. I, I want you to understand what we say when we're talking about fentanyl. And it was responsible for 71,238 of the record 107,000 fatal drug overdoses. Over half was due to fentanyl in the United States last year alone, according to the CDC. Fentanyl is brought across the southern border primarily by two drug trafficking organizations. This, I can't pronounce it. It's S-I-N-A-L-O-A cartel and the J-A-L-I-S-C-O new generation cartel, according to authorities. <clears throat> the Rio Grande Valley sector border patrol apprehended nearly a dozen individuals over the weekend. Three of these arrested were members of the Mara Shav the MS-13 gang, while other two were members of the 18th Street gang from El Salvador. Authorities also arrested a Honduran Pajan gang member. Two Mexican nationals previously convicted of statutory rape and injuring to a child were also arrested by authorities on the same weekend. We see this happening and how the left, we know their agenda, they know they're trying to destroy the country. And, I, and, and sometimes we, we seem oblivious to it because we live so far from it. But the fact of the matter is they're infiltrating this country. They're infiltrating our, our world and, and the economic woes and the, the medical woes. And the, the, it's almost like the Biden administration is trying to destroy this country by allowing open borders to take place. And that's really what it is. And I'm going to let this guy talk, and hopefully you can hear him. If you can, or if you can't, let me know, and I'll try to fix it. It's not a video. It's just going to be a sound bite, okay? We'll try to get this mic over closer so you can hear it. Well, let me stop. Let me stop. This is uh, Agent uh, Victor Vila. He's, a, he's an American Hispanic. And I want you to hear what he has to say, a former Border Patrol agent. What happened? I lost him. Oh, imagine that. What happened? Mm -mm -mm. Let me see if I can go back and pick it back up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to pick him up again. So, um, Arizona happened over the weekend. Victor Avila is a retired ICE Homeland Security investigation special agent. He's the author of the book called Agent Under Fire. His partner was killed by a drug cartel. Sir, thank you for your time and good morning to you. Good morning, Bill. Uh, we know it's a problem and we're not doing much to stop it. How can we affect the drug cartels in Mexico from killing Americans? Well, we, we have to first of all, uh, first of all, recognize Bill the imminent threat that these cartels bring to the United States. Uh, it's the fentanyl, it's the methamphetamine, it's the human trafficking. Because now the cartels work in all of these illicit activities. They used to be what they were called drug cartels, but I don't re refer to them as drug cartels anymore. They should be designated as foreign terrorist organizations, which is now the new way I think that we approach them to finally take them out. By designating them as FTOs, we would bring new resources like Department of Defense resources, freeze their assets. We know that the cartels, are, are their motive is the power and the money. Let's freeze their assets. Let's take them out by uh, taking away their money and their power. Hey, Victor, what, what are we waiting on? Well, uh, having this administration doesn't help, Bill. It, it's, um, uh, we see the, the deaths. Uh, I have a, a friend of mine, uh, Jaime Puerta, who, who lost his 16-year-old son to fentanyl poisoning. And you know what he told me the other day? He's like, we're, we're suffering about three 9-11 attacks per month in this country, and no one is paying attention. And, and that's how serious this problem is with the cartels, with the help of China, uh, uh, the, the, the precursors, the chemicals. Mexico is not being held accountable. So there's a lot of ways to attack this, and it's just not 
uh, coming forth, not even from our own government, and it's a big issue. They're a threat to the whole country. Yeah, here's the seizures year to date anyway. Um, and we, we've already beaten the record, so once again, we're number one, right? Fiscal year, year to date, uh, year to date through July, 10,000 pounds seized. Whew. Um, that's just about more than last year and the year before and the year before that. Here's your major bus in the month of August. On the 24th of August, 187 pills, uh, pounds rather, of fentanyl pills. Uh, the day before that, 28 and a half pounds of fentanyl powder. Two weeks prior to that, 41 pounds of fentanyl, uh, fentanyl powder. All of that goes into, I mean, they, they put it, they, they lace it in drugs. You don't know what you're taking. And, and before you know, just a speck of that can kill you. And not only will it kill you, but those that it doesn't kill, remember that fentanyl is a very highly addictive drug. One time of use, you're going to be hooked on this drug. And so we have that issue on top of that. The methamphetamine also that, that accompanies a lot of these uh, uh, counterfeit pills have a huge impact on law enforcement across the country, of the people committing crimes to get their hands uh, on these type of drugs. It is a big issue, and, you know, uh, the cartels don't care what and who they affect. They have no regard for human life. I know that firsthand. They killed my partner next to me. I was shot three times and survived by the grace of God. And so uh, they continue to face a threat, not just in the border states, uh, but everywhere in our country. And it's the, uh, like I mentioned, it's the, the other human elements that they don't care about. The, the using the, a lot of the illegal aliens is not just at the ports of entry where they're bringing in these drugs, but in between the ports of entry, utilizing these uh, migrants to bring in the drugs themselves as well. All right, you know the topic so well. Tell me about your partner, Jaime. Well, we were ambushed uh, back in 2011 by the Zetas cartel uh, while we were driving on the main corridor from uh, Monterey back to Mexico City. We were officially assigned to the U.S. Embassy there, and we were ambushed by eight shooters, and tragically, Agent Zapata was lethally wounded and lost him in the line of duty. Like I said, I survived being shot three times, and this is personal to me. I, I want to be able to bring the awareness of how these cartels have grown, how the power, how the influence, they have taken over the country of Mexico, Bill. They have influence not just in the police, but in the political uh, spectrum as well. And journalists, you know, Mexico is the most dangerous country for a journalist to wor work in right now, not the Middle East, not over there, it's in Mexico. They've killed officially 15, but the official number is up to 30. And this is what we have, in we get impacted with the ripple effect of what's happening in Mexico in our country because it is coming to every corner. It's not just illegal immigration, it's everything else that accompanies it. You bring a very important message to this. Thank you, Victor, for joining us today. And good luck on your book. It's called Agent Under Fire. Victor Avila, thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? This is a guy that's a formal ICE agent, if you will, Homeland Security agent. And he's telling us the facts of all this that's going on at the border. And he's right. This administration cares nothing about the border states in particular, cares nothing about this country. The open borders, is a, it's, it's ludicrous in itself. There's not many nations in this world that has open borders that just allow people to pour in. And I agree with him. I think we ought to start treating these drug cartels over in Mexico and wherever they come from as terrorist organizations because they're threatening the livelihoods. How many out there tonight can just testify in itself and say, hey, I know somebody or I'm related to somebody or, I, or I'm close to or just go to church or work or even in my hometown who's OD'd on drugs. And a lot of this is being fed into our country because of an open border policy that the Biden administration and all the left lefties, leftists, if you will, uh, in itself is allowing this to take place and even more than it ever was before. He was talking, you couldn't see it, and I'm sorry I didn't get the video, but he was showing last year was over 10,000 and something pounds. This year to date was in July or August. We had already superseded that number. In the years before that, they weren't even double-digit numbers yet because we had a more secure border. Not to say, and that's the things that they catch. We understand that more get through. And, and it just amazes me that how an administration can allow things like that to happen because we live in such a turmoil of drugs and alcohol, or out drugs, excuse me, 
and allow these to happen. And you got drug cartels coming in. We read it. You had two sex offenders crossing the border that have been accused or convicted in this country. And now they're trying to get back in and caught. I forget how many gang members we read it. We're coming back into this country. And they ought to be treated like terrorists. We ought to treat them like they're outlaws that they are. Amen. Not everybody that crosses the border is. There is some legitimacy to people who want to get away from the atrocities that they live in. But let's do it right. Let's close them up. Let's vet them. Let's secure the border. Let's vet them. Let's check them out. And if they ain't good, then you send them back. And if they are good, a law-abiding citizens that are trying to get uh, asylum, if you will, then that's what this country has always done. But we've never had an open border policy to where people just pour in <coughs> without any kind of documentation or without any kind of, of, of things in itself that wasn't allowed to be vetted. Amen? Amen. Got any comments or questions out there so far? Real quick, before I jump into the next little thing, uh, sad note today, uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away. She was 90, how old was she? She was 90 something, I can't remember. I'm trying to find it. I just saw it and lost it. You ever just have something that goes, ooh, it just disappears. Do, 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 do. I can't believe I lost it. Anybody know how old Queen Elizabeth was out there? <laughs> Donnie Moore, she was 96. Wow, 96. Real quick, we're at a quick article to go back to the border things. There, Texas is sending people to different states. Amen. These left wing states, if you will, that that are sanctuary cities. He's sending them to the sanctuary. Oh, sanctuary cities. I hit the wrong button. Uh, I did read a thing. I was trying to get to it. It said, uh, let me see. The Washington Examiner says this. Politicians in Washington, D.C. are experiencing a sudden rash of xenophobia increased by the arrival of hundreds of illegal immigrants that are now complaining that the governor of Texas and Arizona who offer these immigrants a free ride to Washington have turned their city into a border town. Imagine that. Welcome to it, Washington, D.C. It's about time you that are up there touting and saying, oh, open borders are okay, and now you've turned D.C. into a border town. Absolutely. I, I thank God. I don't say I thank God, but I think that Texas governor and, and, and Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott, I believe is his, his name, from Texas and Florida, they ought to be sending them up there. They're the ones saying it's okay if they come, then ship them to them. They've shipped them to other states too. I think uh, to that self, this Washington was in itself was a sanctuary city. That's what they signed up for. I like what it says. Like most Democratic officials in the city, council member uh, Brian Nadu, I may pronounce the name wrong, has boasted about Washington, D.C. being a sanctuary city, but that was back when being a sanctuary city was just a convenient form of virtual signaling, letting other white liberals know that they are tolerated and inclusive. Now that they are actually consequences to being a sanctuary city, it's a problem. It's all right to talk about it, but when you got it in your back door, then it becomes a problem. Texas and Arizona are helping illegal immigrants reach her city. They're usually glad to take the free ride. They're giving them free bus rides to these cities. And now, surprise, surprise, it says, the white liberals are much less accepting. Imagine that. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Uh, let's see this. Brianna K. Nadu, she's the uh, council member there in Washington, D.C., says, I'm deeply troubled by reports that ISIS, ICE conducted a, an action at Adams Morgan's this past weekend. This was in June 25, June the 25th, 2019. This is what she says at, at that moment. Uh, this past weekend that resulted in two parents being brought into custody and separated from their teenage children. These actions tear at our families apart and so deep distrust in law enforcement. Now, now that they're sending, and, and you see this, it, it's, it's a whole... Um, Oh, yeah, also on June 25th through 19, the district is a sanctuary city, she says, which means our law enforcement does not cooperate with ICE. As council member, I have called for an ob an abol to abolish ICE 
and wrote D.C.'s laws to establish a permanent immigrant legal service fund. Now it's a whole different thing once it's all coming into play. This is what she said in 2019. She's not quite saying that now. The D.C. mayor, Muriel Bowser, is declaring a public emergency over migrants being bused to D.C. from Texas and Arizona in the ongoing border crisis. The city is creating a migrant service office to better facilitate the needs of the people arriving. Here, listen, this is the lady that now now Bri Brianna, I guess it's probably Brianna, the same council member who was talking about now we're a sanctuary city. Here's what she says. It says, now this council member blamed the governors of Texas and Arizona for creating this crisis and said they have turned D.C. into a border town. Welcome to their neighborhood. Come on now. If you're a sanctuary city, then be one. Just be quiet and suck it up, buttercup. Amen. Amen. Good gravy. But isn't that crazy? They all good for it when it don't affect them. That's like that's like it gets me about President Biden. I understand security, but he don't want to build a border around our country's wall. We don't want to, he don't want to build a wall down around the border. But he, our taxpayer money is building him a wall around his place up in Delaware. Come on, it's it's the same. It's it's communism and it's socialism. It's all okay for the for the common folk to have to suffer through this, but the elite. The rich, just like guns, they want to take our guns, but they have armed bodyguards around them. Come on, take their guns. If everybody's going to be without guns, let's be on a, a level playing field. And they don't want walls around the, the border, but they've got walls around their subdivisions and walls around their own homes. I, it kills me about these uh, Hollywood people that say, oh, they shouldn't have border walls down on the border. But I'm telling you what, you won't get into their house without 1,600 cameras and probably 1,500 bodyguards and a wall around their compound. If you're like that and you feel that way, tear your wall down and open it up and let people come into your place. It's that simple, but we don't live in that society today. We live in a society who, and, and that's what communism and socialism breeds. And oh man, you can get on that all day, but it bleeds. A, it breeds elitism. You got the rich, and you got the rest of us. There ain't no middle class in socialism. Hear me today. There is no middle class in socialism. There is no middle class in communism. You either got money and you got power, or you ain't got nothing. It's that simple. In comments. But I want you to see this, and we're living in this, and it's crazy how people talk. He said they've been sending them to Delaware, they've been sending them all over the place, and they ought to. They really ought to. I'm trying to find the other thing. I can't find what I wanted to, to go to next. The one I wanted to cover... I can't find it is Biden's such a divisive speech that he made. He was the president. He come in and saying, I'm going to unify the country, but he see that he's not trying to unify the country. The only way the, the democratic left, if you will, the only way that the socialist or the communists want to unify the country is if you agree with them. But if you disagree with them, then you are a threat to democracy. They say, <laughs> the only threat to democracy is the Biden administration and the left wing of the Democratic Party. That is the only threat to this country and through the democracy that this country stands for. He threw down the gauntlet, if you will, and said that the MAGA people, the, the Make America Great people, are uh, a threat to democracy. 70 million people voted for Trump. 
He called out 70 million people in this country and said they were a threat to democracy. Now, I don't know about you, but that is not unifying a nation. That is driving a wedge deeper and further. And that's communism. I'm just saying, I wish you could read some of the history. And I, maybe I'll look it up one time and run, me and Pastor, and we'll run with it. But communism, that's what it does. It divides the people. It divides them racially. It divides them economically. It divides them with ethnicity, eth, eth, ethnics. It divides them men and women, and it begins to divide. And anything that's divided can be conquered. And we know that in itself. And I'm hoping the American people are wise enough to see this. I think the only people who buy this are the ones who really follow after that and just believe everything they say uh, about it. And I was going to read, the Washington Examiner said this about this speech. Democrats in tough re-election races want nothing to do with President Joe Biden's recent campaign to label half the country as a threat to democracy. I mean, how crazy is that? Good gravy. Asked to comment on Biden's Philadelphia speech, Senator Maggie Hassan, the Democrat from New Hampshire, told a TV station, radio station, I think President Biden's comments just painted the way too broad, painted with a way too broad brush. She went on to say it will not have to set Republican opponent till after September the 13th, but recently uh, the polls show she, her up by only one point over the Republican frontrunner. New Hampshire has been a Democrat state. Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, a Democrat who is also locked in a close re-election fight, denied even watching Biden's speech. I think a president has a right to give his opinion, he told the Associated Press. You know I don't share all his opinions, but he has the right to give his opinions. They're running from what he said, and rightfully so, because anybody in their right mind knows that that was a device and causing division in this country, causing division in this land. He made his definition, Biden, he said, made his definition clear of MAGA Republicans. He said, are a threat to the very soul of this country, includes conservatives who are pro-life or support voter identification. That's, that's crazy. That's just plum crazy talk. We do ourselves no favor to Listen to otherwise. this. So tonight, I've come to this place where it all began to speak as plainly as I can to the nation, about the threats we face, about the power we have in our own hands to meet these threats. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represented extremism that threatens the very foundation of our republic. Not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know, because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And they're working right now, as I speak, in state after state, to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies empowering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. They tried everything last time to nullify the votes of 81 million people. This time, they're determined to succeed in thwarting the will of the people. We are not powerless in the face of these threats. We are not bystanders in this ongoing attack on democracy. This is a nation that respects free and fair elections. We honor the will of the people. We do not deny it. Blind loyalty to a single leader. And a yeah, and he's got a lot of room to talk. That's what they want is blind loyalty. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They don't want us to make up our own minds. And and we all know about the election. He talked about that, but I'm talking there's 70 million people who voted against him. So what about that? Amen. That was Biden's speech. And you can tell right then that it was to divide this country. He drew a line in the sand against those who are conservative, those who have conservative values uh, in itself. And we, and he wants to say that, I'm trying to be kind, he wants to say we're a threat to democracy. Socialism and communism is a threat to democracy. It's a threat to this republic. It's a threat to the power that the people have. And that's what our founding fathers gave us. 
was the power, the power, he gave it to the, the power in the people's hands and not in the politicians' hands and not in the government's hands, but we've allowed through history to allow bureaucrats to infiltrate and, and places that were, and we allow things to be set up for hopefully to help us people that are in power that are not voted in. You hear the czar of this and the czar of that and the, and the, and the, and the bureaucrat of this and that and over that. These people are not elected officials. They are people who are appointed by elected officials. But once they're in, it's hard to root them out. And that's what happened. That's what's happened to the FBI. And I ain't saying this about the FBI because I think there's some good men and women who serve the FBI faithfully, who serve, who do their duty as diligently as they can. But there is some high-ranking officials now that we are beginning to see the light of what they're doing. And it's it's just right mainstream media. And they don't want to talk about it. But they invade, they, they raid Trump's uh, homes, home, if you will, in Mar-a-Lago, I guess how you pronounce it. But here's my question. And I've seen it posted, but what about Hillary Clinton's lost emails? What about Hunter Biden's laptop? What about the flight log of Epstein? We're not seeing none of that. We don't see the FBI praying that around or raiding their homes and trying to find those things. We know for a fact that it's coming out that they suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop because of the election. Those are people who are in power who ought to be on the side of justice and not on the political side of the realm. But we see it happening day in and day out. There's not a fair shake when it comes to the FBI. I posted something the other day. FBI stood for Biden's interest. Somebody posted it and I shared it. It said that Elon Musk was willing to pay, I forget how many billions of dollars for the FBI. But we ain't heard from the Clintons yet if they want to sell. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying all FBI men are bad, and I'm saying there's probably majority of them that work in the field offices and work in, the, in, the, in some of the upper offices are good, hard-working, law-abiding, law-toting men of, of, of service, if you will, officers, if you will, agents of the FBI. But there's some in high-ranking positions who are allowing these things to happen because they're politically charged, if you will, or they got their hands in a cookie jar somewhere. I hope that's okay. Hopefully our pastor will be back next week, but I'm here right now, so just bear with me as I get off my soapbox and rant and rave a little bit on the FBI leadership, not the FBI in a whole. Somebody said we ought to defund the FBI. I think that's wrong. You don't ever defund your police force. You don't ever. Now you can. You ought to prosecute some people who are or who are suppressing things, who are becoming a. What's the word I'm looking for? Even in, even in, if I was and in, in knew somebody that had committed a crime and I kind of led the law off track or tried to suppress it, then they could get me for being part of that because I was trying to hinder their investigation. And so should these men or women who have hindered the investigation over the, the, the Epstein thing and over the uh, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop or over Mrs. Clinton's emails that disappeared. But you don't see all that because it's a double standard when you get up so high, I guess, except unless they're after you. And they're after Trump for one thing and one thing only. They're not looking for documents. They're, they tried everything they could. They tried Russian collusion. They tried the January 6th probe. They tried, I forget what the other thing was, they tried, they tried to impeach. Now they're going after saying he had secret documents. And I bet when that comes to play, that's not where nothing's working. What they're trying to do is if they can get enough evidence to kind of keep him from running again for office because they're afraid if he runs again, they're going to lose. Come on. If they play fair. Amen. So it's all, that's what it's about. It's, it's a witch hunt against him because they're afraid he's going to come back in 2024 and run. They're trying to find something that sticks. The January 6th probe did not stick. The Russian collusion did not stick. Uh, I forget the last thing they did before January 6th, but none of that is stuck. And I don't believe this is going to stick unless they fabricate something. So and in turn, we're going to see, it's going to be interesting come midterm or come November in these midterm elections to see if the Republicans in the red wave can come back and take the House over again. And then it'll be interesting to see if if Trump himself steps into the into uh, the the race again. Any comments out there? You guys are awful quiet out there tonight. Do 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 do. do. Uh oh, oh! Thought my computer went out. I'm 
trying to find the other thing I was looking for. I'm not as organized as I would have liked to have been. Be praying for the Texas Governor Abbott. He's in a re-election bid in the Berto O'Rourke. And uh, so let's pray that Abbott stays in power, if you will, as the governor of Texas and not uh, Berto O'Rourke. He's uh, He ran for president, I think, maybe. I'm not sure, but I believe he did. But he's very, very leftist, if you will. Well, can't find it, can't find it. But anyway, any some comments out there? Good day. Terry May says, I think you're 100% right. It's all just to try to keep him from winning again. That's right. They're trying to keep him out of power or trying to run again and win the election again. And, and it's it, that's what it's all about because they've never chased another president like this. I don't know of any other president that they invaded their home after they were out of office. I, I, if, if somebody knows that, let me know because I don't, I don't know about it. And it shocks me, and I'm looking, just trying to find what I wanted to look at here next, but I just, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go on that subject tonight. I don't think I've seen something pop up about transgenderism, but I was uh, I was reading here real quick, and we're still stuck on the Trump on the divisive language of our president. Uh, Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce, this is from Fox News, slammed Hillary Clinton for uh, using. And she Hillary Clinton cautioned President Biden against using extreme languages, despite her own previous rhetoric on the Faulkner Focus. Thursday, Bruce said Clinton set the tone on the attack and in isolating Republicans. See where that got her. <laughs> okay. We were called the deplorables. <laughs> we were called the deplorables when we were for uh, Clinton, or for Clinton, for Trump. Um, I was trying to see if I could pull it up and, and play you the audio of it. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me see. This is Tammy Bruce from Fox News. Let me see here. Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor and host of Get Tammy Bruce on Fox Nation, joining me now. It was so toxic, toxic and explosive at the time. Have Democrats learned nothing as yet another person atop their party goes on with the name calling in the nasty? Well, I think they did learn. They learned how to do it. And this is, this is right. This is the standard now. And that was what was so shocking was that it, that she said that in multiple speeches. Some people thought that was off the cuff, and that she, I don't know, maybe a glass of Chardonnay was involved, but that wasn't the case. In fact, it was said in many different places, including in a, an event in Israel, including in a foreign country. So what this does, of course, she set the tone. That campaign, those Democrats said, let's now condemn Americans. It's one thing to argue about policy and to try to bring people over. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Instead, their dynamic is, let's condemn these people. Let's remove them. Let's isolate them. Let's call them names. Let's make neighbor suspicious of neighbor, co-worker suspicious of co-worker, friend of friend. This is, and then they have the, she dares to say, she, Biden's got to be careful. She set the tone. She wrote the play. And, right. and of course, we see the negative reaction. This is what they want. She's pretending, but that's what the Democrats do. Well, She's talking about Hillary Clinton trying to give advice to Biden, and she was the one that really set the tone. And she said she even done it in Israel. And you know what I was thinking about when that lady was talking there? She said it was uh, neighbor against neighbor and, and, and calling people and isolating people. And I go back to 
Nazism and fascism, and they want to try to call us fascists, but they do the things that Hitler did when they went against the Jews. The reason the German people began to not like the Jewish people is because of the propaganda that was promoted by Hitler and his regime, if you will, or his party, if you will, that, that the Jews were less than human and that they needed to be wiped off the face of the earth. They, they, they would turn on each other. They would turn in a Jew because they thought they were worse and less and, 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 a, and caused trouble in their own country. And they, were, they fell into that. And, and right, I mean, not the German people's all of its fault in itself, but it was propaganda and it was name calling and it was putting people and isolating a group of people. So what Biden has said and what uh, uh, Miss Clinton has said is that now all these 70 million people that are MAGA supporters are now becoming terror, are becoming threats to democracy. It's, it, it's, it's rooted, man. I, you, you got to go back and, and look at history like it really is when Hitler took power and Stalin took power and, and Lenin took power and, and, and the dude in China, uh, the founder of the Communist Party in China, in China took power. It's the guns. It's the freedom of speech. It's division. It's calling out people who don't agree with you. It's not that. It, here's where we're at in our country. We can we cannot not agree with each other anymore. We either you agree with the left, or you're you're a deplorable, or you're a threat to democracy, or you're a, or you're a threat to this country's fiber, if you will. The fact of the matter is, and I said it earlier, they're the threat. Because it used to, you could have a difference of opinion and you debated it in openness without any any rhetoric, if you will, or name calling, if you will, or threats, if you will. But we're living in a society today that has been indoctrinated that if you're not on their side, and I'm talking about this administration and this left-wing government that is in power now, then you're ostracized to them. You, you can't debate them. You can't Say, so, hey, I don't right agree with you. And it used to be we could be we could disagree to disagree, but you can't do that anymore in this nation with that group of people. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to get too much on my soapbox. And I told you I wouldn't keep you too much longer here in a little bit, but I'm just overwhelmed by the the lack of knowledge. And and I know what it is. It's our school systems that are doing it, it's the colleges that have been doing it for decades. They've been indoctrinating a young generation that capitalism is wrong and communism is better. Good gravy. We left that. Our forefathers would have stood up and done shot somebody. Come on. They would have took up arms and defeated and tried to defeat this government because it is not what the Constitution is set up for and it's not what this republic is set up for. But, my goodness, I ain't saying we should take up arms. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you to think that because... I think we ought to be praying, first of all, for Christians. We ought to be seeking God to change this country. Come on now, change the administration. We need to vote. We need to be registered voters. We need to speak like we hear and tell our people the truth of what's really happening in this land. And hopefully some people outside this get a hold of this and hear it and, 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 and grab hold of it. Amen. Amen. I hope that's good. I hope it's all right tonight. Oh, here's a good one. I hope this happens. Oregon voters fed up with Portland crime could reelect Republican Governor Marilyn. Governor Hogan says, Maryland Republican Governor Larry Hogan, oh, this is Maryland, is enthusiastic about the GOP's chance of winning Oregon's governor race, predicting relentless crime could drive voters to flip the state red and elect Republican citizen or Christine Drasden. Hey, here's the thing. Let, let's understand this for a moment. And I know we, we skipped around a little bit, but I think it's important that we see this, is that we're living this, in these in these left, leftist, democratic-controlled cities who wanted to defund the police, their crime rate has skyrocketed. Right? I mean, I mean, not rightfully so, but statistically so. If you got less police force, then the crime's going to go up. And the bad part is they're not allowing to arm their own citizens. And people get tired of that. They were all on board with that when it was happening. 
But what they were saying wasn't registering because they began to follow suit, if you will, and begin to believe the mainstream media. I want to say this about police officers. There's some good ones, just like they are in the FBI, and there's some bad ones. Come on. We're human in itself. And sometimes they go through things that we don't know they go through and snap at times, and that's humanity. But the fact of the matter is, here's the key. Biden and them and all that left groups cried. Defund the police. They jumped on board with that movement of the BLM, which is a communist organization. I'm just going to say it. It's a Marxist organization. You ought to read it. But here's the key is, is that now Biden is wanting to hire more police officers because they, they use that as a platform. They use the African-Americans to get them in power and use the platform now that they're turning their back against. I talked to an African-American lady that I know, and she was talking about the Biden administration, and she was talking about the Trump administration, and she said black people had it better, African-Americans had it better under Trump than they have under Biden. The only time the Democrats tout after the American African-American people is election time. They don't really care. They're worried about your vote, and they never very, very seldom fulfill the promises that they've asked they're going to do. But in its own sense and on its own rhetoric, here we are. This um, and, and we see that rising crime is a concern, if you will, in midterms. The borders are concerned during midterms. The, the inflation is a concern during midterms. I mean, you, the gas prices are a concern in these midterms that are coming up. Hopefully, we'll be able to discuss more of them as we, as we uh, move in that direction. I want to read this about this. The Portland is a poster child for the far-left policies that are run amok, this guy says. Hogan told American Newsroom host Bill Hammer. Uh, people are doing hard drugs that are now legalized all over the streets. They are homeless people. A 207 increase in violent crime. This is an Oregon. Probably important, one of the bigger cities. Hogan went on to call Drazen a great candidate to replace outgoing Governor Kate Brown in November, arguing many in Oregon have grown tired of the status quo. You cannot live in that left-wing mess and it not affect the whole city and the whole country. I'm praying she wins. I'm praying they get the, it gets back to the for the people, the law-abiding citizens. Portland residents are fleeing the city as homeless fill neighborhood parks and crime surges. It happens that you can't live under that. Let me say this. If you could go to Nancy Pelosi's uh, district that she's voted out of, you ought to see the tent cities that's in her district. I'm just saying, just go watch, go look, look it up. It's on, it's on the web. It is on the web. It is on the web. Any questions out there? Any comments? Any topics you want to look at while we're buzzing through this thing real quick? I'm telling you, we're living it. I just, I hate it for this country. But I'm hoping it's opening the eyes to this country, to a lot of people. I'm hoping it's opened the eyes to some Democrats that are real God-fearing, God-loving Americans. That your party ain't what it once was. Your party is not the Kennedy party no more. Your party ain't even close to Bill Clinton's party no more. Your party has begun, became about socialism communism, control, and power. Your party is not what it used to be. I'm going to say this on air, why we're aware, I don't shock nobody. But here, I grew up as a Democrat. There's no doubt my grandfathers, both of them, because the Democratic Party used to have the moral values and used to believe in the American people and used to believe in the right to bear arms and used to believe in the freedom of speech, used to be for the working class, the middle class, and the working class folks. They did for a lot of years. But somewhere in the midst of all this, they begin to turn in the 90s, and it's all downhill from there. And now they're so far out of it that the Republicans, the Republican has become the conservative, 
And the Democrats used to be the conservatives, and now it's flipped over to the Republicans. Can I tell you this, Christians, be Christians first and, first and foremost. You don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat. I'm just showing you the flip. But I come to a point where I realize that they were not for what would this country was founded on. They were not for the moral values that this country was based on. They were not for the liberties that this country was based on. And I quit voting for that mess. It's that simple. And my grandfathers, if they were alive today, they, they would probably, I hope they didn't vote, <laughs> but if they were alive today, there's no way they would have followed after this mess because they know what it stands, they know what it stands for and what it stands against. And I think too many people in America fall after and we get hung up on this party and that party when we ought to be voting for those who put our best interests at heart and are working for the people and not for themselves. I'm going to move off on that subject there because I know we're running a little bit out of time. I wasn't going to keep you as long. Um, oh, hit the wrong button. You ever hit the wrong button? It's something we won't get into because it's too late, but it says Biden student loan debt transfers and abuse of executive power. I agree. I don't see how he had the power to do that. Because it's a, that's that's a slap in the face of our men and women of, of in our armed forces where they get the GI Bill because they serve our country, and rightfully so they should. And now you got people that ain't done nothing and you're just going to give them something. And it slaps the people who have paid off their own student loans. If, if, if somebody can do it, then so can you. There's no way we should have to forfeit our income. It's coming out of our taxes, part of my hard-earned money to pay for somebody's college. And I can't afford to send my own kids or my own grandkids to college. Come on now. How stupid is that? All that was was a political move because it's close to the midterms and he was able to do it with a swipe of a pen and it was trying to get more of the young voters. That's it. And California's going to fall off the face of the earth. They're going to dry up. Did you hear that they're uh, they're going to stop uh, uh, gas-powered motors by 2035? You'll not be able to purchase a gas. I don't know if you'll be able to drive one in there or not, but you will not be able to buy a gas-burning automobile. It's all electric. Now, here's my problem. Right now, I read an article said the uh, second week of the heat wave, and it's, and it's crippling the grid, the electrical grid. If they can't keep up now, and they put a billion automobiles on her, however many they got in California, on that same electrical grid, well, ain't no way it's going to take it. What the communists want and the socialists want is them to have automobiles and jet airplanes and the rest of us to be like them little Chinese people over there riding bicycles everywhere. I'm telling you, if we don't, if America does not wake up and vote these people out of power, we're going to be there. California's trying to pass a new law that they're going to raise the minimum wage for restaurant and workers. They're going to run them people out of business and they're going to leave. There's people leaving Florida or California by leaps and bounds. You know how I know it's true? It's because the California governor got on there and encouraged them not to go to Florida. If it wasn't the impact, he wouldn't be saying anything. It's that simple. Amen. trying to find the one little thing and I was going to play it and I can't find it. I should probably should have saved it. And you could have heard her. I'm trying to remember. Uh, ah. Probably won't be able to find it now. She was going to be our deplorable of the week, but I cannot locate it. You guys got any comments or anything out there while I'm looking? I 
Here it is again. Portland residents with disabilities sue city over homeless tents blocking sidewalks. It's a mess out there in Portland because they allowed all that mess to happen out there and lost all control of that city. Well, where is that lady at? Well, I might not be able to find it. And I hate I can't. But with all that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you for being part of this. And, and our pastor will hopefully be back next week. Continue to be praying for him. It's war on truth. I'm still trying to find that lady. But she really was, she had a thing. Don't forget, uh, just uh, be praying for our pastor uh, that whole, everything goes well and he's able to get rid of this kidney stone and this thing's been a rough one on him and uh, I am anyway I can't find it. But let's remember that. Remember our service is coming up Sunday morning, 8.15. Uh, early service. Be there. If you ain't got, if you if it fits your schedule, you got something to do, or if you're just coming off work or going to work, come as you are. Uh, and uh, we'll see 8.15. And then we have a 9.30 small groups. And we have um, 10.30 worship and 6 o'clock worship. And... Uh, so remember those, and we'd love to see everybody come out. Amen. Thank you, Sister Terry. Um, but hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll all be back in order here in a couple of weeks. Everything will be running smoother. But, hey, don't forget uh, that uh, September the 25th is our Sunday Night Lives. Man, I'm excited about those. We always... Lord always honored us with that, it seemed like. And uh, hmm. thought I had my phone plugged up, but it went out, so it must not have been plugged up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but anyhow, uh, let's remember all that. Amen. And uh, we'll, uh, I'm still trying to find that lady. I wish I could find her because she really, she really nailed it to the, to the thing. And I can't remember. Um, Hey, just a quick thing. If you live here in, in Morristown or in Jefferson City, I seen a uh, B-25 or a B-24. I think it was a B-25 fly over Morristown today. If you don't know what a B-25 is, it's an old World War II bomber. I think it may be down at the Morristown Airport. They may be uh, giving tours of it and showing you. You can look at it and check it out. They had a B-17 a few years back. Um and it was real interesting. So if you're a history guy or history lady and you like that kind of stuff, I think I seen it fly over. I was coming through Morristown today right around the, the new Walmart area. That dude come flying over there, man. And I was talking to my granddaughter and she says, she's at, she was at Manly School getting ready to swap buses. And she said, man, there's a plane with guns out on it. I said, I told you what that was. But anyway, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, that's just a little side note. Also, I think the Blue Angels are coming into town. I don't know if it's weekend or next weekend. In Knoxville, man, that's an awesome thing to see. It's our men and men and women finest uh, aeronautical. That's a Navy aeronautical uh, demonstration team. So hey, <clears throat> so let's remember that. Amen. Don't forget, Queen Elizabeth did pass away. If you're getting late, she was 95 or 96. I think somebody put on there. Uh, man, I can't find that woman. I want to find that woman. Uh, but anyway, it's not going to happen. Don't look like. Probably find it after I get off here. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And hopefully we will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, if you will. It is this weekend when they're getting ready for. Amen. Hey, that's a good deal, man. If you've never been to an air show, you ought to go. It's awesome. I'm telling you what, the power that America. I'm a, I'm a fly guy anyway. I like planes and 
and I like military history, but I really like the aircraft, and I'd like to ride one of them things one time. I probably couldn't take it, uh, but I sure would like to try. I always wanted to ride the space shuttle one time. We talk about horsepower. They don't even call it horsepower. It's pounds per thrust or something like that. But anyway, uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and uh, let's pray uh, before we leave. I forget that's part of what we do here is we pray at the end. So like I said, let's continue to pray for our pastor. Let's continue to pray for Brother Mark Gillum, Shannon Scarborough, and I know there's a few others that are sick and under the weather today and uh, that just need a touch from the Lord. Amen. Uh, so let's remember that. Um, I'm thinking it might be it. <laughs> Amen. The delay does get us, don't it? That's funny. Sister Terry says that delay gets me. It gets me all the time too because I'm 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 asking questions and I'm rolling on and then I'm like, oh, there's the, they answered the questions and I'm thinking I got to give them time and I talk too fast, I guess. But let's pray. Uh, let's invite the Lord into our country. <clears throat> let's be praying for our country, praying for our representatives, praying for our leaders, praying for the elections that are coming up that they'll be first and foremost fair. Amen. The American people need to be heard. If it's, if that's what they want in their state, that's their state. Just leave us alone. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's pray that the elections are fair. Let's pray that they are they are becoming more uh, conservative or moral values or more in play, if you will, uh, what this country was founded on. So let's pray tonight, and we'll be uh, dismissed, I guess, if you will. But let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing here, God. And we're asking you, God, right now to begin to move in our country, God, like never before, God. We we got elections coming up, and God, please, please, please let them be fair first and foremost, God. Let the people's voices be heard, Father Lord. And God, we're asking right now, Father God, that you move, and God, that, that we do have a, a fair election, and we do have an election that turns in this country's favor of what it was founded for, Father God, and what it was based on, Father Lord. And God, we ask you right now, the best thing that could happen for our president and vice president and all our representatives in Congress and the city and all those staff is that they all become really saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. God, we're asking you to move, God. God, let this country still be a beacon of freedom and a beacon of Christianity, Father Lord. And God, we ask you right now, God, to move in everything that we do, God. Move on upon our pastor, continue to heal his body, God. We're asking God to heal him right now, this very moment, this very hour, this very second, Father God. Move, Father God. You know the ministries that are going outside this church in the direction we're heading, God, and we're asking you right now to move in it, Father Lord. And God, we ask all these things right now by the power and by the authority and by the name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen amen again thanks for watching thank you for being part of this tonight and i'm trying to figure out how to end this thing so just bear with me well where am i at